So this one is also uh, complex and it, it's uh, uh, for the asset discovery and also vulnerability scanning. Uh, it is in the beginning getting the root domain and uh, word list limit uh, where you can put uh, minus one for unlimited word lists, but you can also limit it so you, your workflow uh, can be faster. Mm -hmm. I will just go to the builder mode so I can explain you how it works. Uh, and what is also pretty interesting and important, you can see here your trickiest token and the workflow ID. Workflow ID is in the URL here, and your trickiest token is in, your, is in, in the account of trickiest in the settings page. And why this is important is basically because of the let me just open the the uh, the get trickiest output, which is uh, which is a, a tool that we created, which is getting all of the previous executions for a particular node. So when you're doing the asset discovery, for example, and you execute a workflow, uh, initially you have like a five domain. Mm -hmm something like that, for example. And when you execute it again, it will get all of the previously, fi uh, previously found five domains and use them in permutations. And the permutations are really important uh, in getting the subdomains. We saw that uh, a lot of times that, that the, when you're doing the permutation, especially a much deeper per permutation, which are using the custom word lists or the word lists from previously found targets, it, it can have better and better results. So that is the explanation for those two inputs here. Those are, uh, th these are optional, but basically you can, you can put them uh, when you're executing this workflow on schedule. So it will get all of the previous results. So in this case, it is doing uh, passive enumeration through AMAS subfinder, uh, one for all, Vita, and, and uh, that's it. Uh, in this case, it is parsing one, of, one for all output uh, because it is in uh, CSV. Let me just open the run. Uh, that's here. So the output for one for all is in CSV. So we are using again script. Mm -hmm. So we have just the, just the root domains basically. So the passive sources is the script which is getting all of the passive sources for trickiest. And uh, here it is, it is adding the HTTPS to script so it's just appending HTTPS to script and then using Tevel to get the custom word list. So now uh, we have like a workflow word list, like all of the stuff we mentioned on our website, we, we created the basically a custom targeted word list. So it can be used, for example, uh, we might have workflows.trickers.com and maybe in your word list, there are no workflow word, words, but in this case, as we created a custom word list, we are using it for the, uh, in this case, for the active brute force, meaning that uh, we will we will execute an active brute forcing uh, with uh, Mk sub, uh, which is our tool, which we, we which the tool we created, which is just just merging the word lists and the domain list, so it can be passed to the resolver kind of tools. So uh, in this play, place, we have, as I mentioned, custom word lists. And, and also we have the, <coughs> sorry, we have the, uh, the, uh, this node, which, which will just resolve only the passive, uh, the passive results. So in the upper side, we are doing the active brute force, but on the downside, we are, we are just resolving all of the passive results. So now we have the phase one complete with all of the host names we, we could gather. And the phase two is, is, um, um, a little bit advanced, but what it does is, is trying to find all of the potential environments we have. So if we have like uh, admin.staging.trickers.com like here, we will try to brute force the staging environment again with those custom word lists we created previously with several and with all of those passive techniques. And on the down uh, on the downside, we will we will use Gotator to do all of the all of the permutations. Uh, after that, after we resolve all of those, we have the, the host names finally. And in this case, I, I haven't used a bigger word list and it, will, it would find uh, uh, additional host names, but I didn't want it to disclose them here. So I, we just have those three. Um, I mean, like we, uh, we already have them in the, in the examples, but like 
uh, yeah, the, the, the idea was that the workflow is, is fast as I was preparing the presentation and it, it takes around nine, 90 minutes on two large machines. Mm -hmm. If people watching the stream wants to know. Um, and uh, yeah, when we resolve all of that, we will, we will get all of, the, all of the host names and then we will use Nabu for the port scan. So we will do the port scan of, of all of the found host names. And as I mentioned, again, this is the batch output pattern we use where the Nabu is going to execute a multiple number of times, like you see here. In this, in this case, batch is uh, uh, around uh, 1000. So it didn't execute it on multiple uh, instances, but basically if you enter Yahoo, it will execute uh, in batches of 1000 for each uh, chunk that is that is in the get host names. It will split it up basically by chunks. And after we got our ports, we will again, of course, use a script to get only the hosts and the port. And we will get the HTTP, HTTPX to get all of the web servers. And after we've got the web servers, uh, we will execute the Nucle scan, web analyze scan, SSLI scan, and down here we will execute Go Witness for the screenshots and Eyeballer for the uh, for the recognizing. Basically, that's a tool that is recognizing what type of the screenshot that is, and create a, an Eyeballer report. I can download it so you can see it. Give me a second. So it can it can uh, it it tries to find 404s lo login uh, kind of pages web application or looking or park domain, and we had an idea actually to to use Chat GPT for these. Uh, we kind of uh, had something in mind, but basically it can have a bunch uh, like better like more broader results than the eyeballer is in terms of like what it can actually realize what the web application is by maybe providing the responses or something like that. So in this case, we have all of the screenshots uh, of, our, of, of our bot and our trick is com. And that's, that's basically it. You get all of, the, all of the stuff in the report at the end and you can, you can consume it uh, as you want. So that's, that's about like uh, the, the, the ideas I had for this demo. Hopefully it was not too complicated. Um, and, and like the last thing I would mention is that um, it takes a while. You, you, Carlos, probably could confirm that it takes a while that you learn the platform. But when you learn it, you can create, like, for example, we can create pro probably this workflow in in matter of hours, uh, maybe a day. It can take it can take us uh, if you know how to build the platform. Of course. Yeah, definitely. But I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that it's difficult to use. Like. Um, as as pen tester, when I saw some examples of the platform and I saw to, I recognize some tools being connected to scripts and other tools, that that way I, I knew exactly what this platform was about. So actually, you just need to have the idea. You just need to know the workflow. You, you just need to know what you want to execute. And it's uh, at the beginning it might be a little bit complex because you need to understand how to connect everything, the different connectors and so on. But in a matter of, 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 of an hour, you are going to be kind of an expert. There are not that many things <laughs> you, you need to, to learn. Everything was pretty intuitive, at least for me. So uh, the user experience in, in my case was very, very, very good. Cool. Uh, that, that's really good to hear. <laughs>